Hi, welcome to Alpine Bravo. This is my channel for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator. My name's Brendan. And today we will be carrying on with our series of tutorials on how to fly the Kodiak 100 by Subwork Studio. Uh, in today, part five, we will be looking at engine starts, uh, the different types of engine starts, what procedures you must follow uh, with the Kodiak, and right at the end we'll take a look at what happens when you do it wrong. Um, Thanks for all of you who have uh, liked and subscribed to the videos and the channel so far. Uh, really appreciate it. And a special shout out to Simwork Studio who have been supporting me in making these videos by making an early access uh, version of the latest release of the Kodiak available. But that is now out and should be available to everyone uh, soon, depending on where you purchased your Kodiak from. So let's hop into the cockpit and carry right from where we left off at the last video and get on with some engine starts. So here we are ready for an engine start. Uh, just say a little bit about the engine in the Kodiak. It's a Pratt & Whitney PT6A-34. Free turbine turboprop uh, delivering 750 shaft horsepower, which is a lot of horses for a light aircraft which is part of what gives the Kodiak its uh, tremendous uh, short takeoff and landing performance. Uh, like any turboprop, it's basically a small jet engine uh, uh, with a bunch of a jet engine in there with a bunch of compressor blades that are used to turn the prop. I'm not going to give a more detailed explanation now, but I'll leave a link in the description that will tell you more about uh, turboprop engines and the PT6A in particular if you are interested. Um, now before we go on to work our way through the checklist also it is worth saying a little bit about what the engine, dial engine dials are. Uh, so at the top uh, we have torque in foot-pounds basically that's the power going uh, through your engine. Uh, next is ITT into turbine temperature monitoring the temperature in the combustion area of the engine and uh, that's what you're going to monitor during startup and during flight. Um, next is MP, P, MP which is prop RPM and you have a yellow arc here which is a do not operate range uh, on the ground and then this green arc here is the normal operating range in the air which is 2000 to 2200 rpm next is ng uh, which is the basically the engine rpm the, the gas uh, the you know the compressor blade rpm uh in percentage so zero to 100 percent uh 100 percent would be 34 and a half thousand rpm uh and you can actually go up to 101.3 is the maximum allowable Fuel flow in pounds per hour, then we have oil pressure, not labelled, uh, along with the other dials, that's a limitation on the G1000 NXI at the moment. But you can tell what is oil pressure and then oil temperature, because oil temperature will at first show the ambient air temperature uh, before anything gets started up. Next we have the ammeter uh, for the generator and the alternator generator on the top alternator on the bottom uh, and it does appear that there's a small bug with this at the minute which the developer is aware of uh, which means that when you first start up it's showing these incorrect values it uh, does sort itself out once you get the engine started and things turned on next we have uh, the voltmeter for the primary and secondary batteries showing 25 volts at the moment uh, and 24 volts is the minimum for an engine start. Next we have aileron and rudder trim indicators. On the real unit you'd also have an aileron trim indicator and a flat position indicator. Uh, but again limitations in the G1000 prevent that. In fact if we come over here we can see we've got low oil pressure, generator and alternator are failed because they're off. Uh, it's indicating a pitot heat off because it's less than 5 degrees. And we're still engine and let bypass uh, when we set it in bypass in the preceding checklist. There are basically two uh, methods of starting the engine. Just 
bring up our checklists and we want the as you can see actually there's a batch powered engine start list and an external power engine start they're virtually identical um, the uh, battery is the normal way of starting the Kodiak and engine external power isn't currently modeled so you nearly always start with a batch powered engine start uh, then you have two methods of starting the engine you can either do a high start or a low motor start now a high start will take both batteries and put them in parallel to deliver, deliver a surge voltage of 48 and that will get the starter spinning a lot quicker and it will lead to lower temperatures in the engine during the startup phase which is, means less chance of a hot start and better overall engine life and you can expect uh, temperatures of about 500 degrees C uh, for a high motor start. A low motor start leaves the batteries in series, takes longer and you'll see temperatures of about 700 degrees C. However, it is the recommended method for starting for the first flight of the day. Um, the other main difference though is in a high start the igniters are actuated automatically. Uh, no need to turn them on uh, whereas in low start you have to manually set the ignition as part of the checklist uh, so it is our first flight of the day so we will be going for a battery powered low motor start so we'll start going through our checklist and we can see we have first is bus one voltage 24 25 indicated put our beacon on let people know that we are going to start turning the prop uh, we're gonna make sure that the emergency power level is still normal it is and we are checking that the propeller area is clear now we're gonna put the uh, just before I start on the next few items I'll just explain what will happen we'll put the auxiliary fuel pump on uh, you'll hear its distinctive and very annoying whine uh, then we'll pop the igniters on and then the starter will go into low. And once the starter goes into low, we will start to see things will spin up and particularly we'll be monitoring the NG and we're not going to introduce any fuel via the condition lever, which is what controls fuel flow to the engine um, until NG is a minimum of 14% or we run the risk of a hot start and that is modelled and you will get a hot start if you do that. Um, the starter should only be on for 15 seconds or so. Uh, longer than that you run the risk of shortening its life or damaging it uh, and it does also of course put a considerable load on the batteries while you're running the starter. So you try and keep the whole process as slick as you can. I'll be doing a little bit slowly for the purposes of this uh, video today just to give people a chance to see things. But once uh, you introduce fuel uh, you'll be very carefully monitoring the ITT making sure it doesn't go up to that maximum of uh, 1090. Um, and once it peaks and stabilizes uh, then you can bring the prop out of feather because you always start with the prop feathered and then start working through you can turn the starter and the ignition off and the, all, uh, the auxiliary fuel pump off and then get the alternator and generator on and then it all can slow down a little bit so having explained that's what we're going to expect let's start going through it we'll get our auxiliary fuel pump on and indicated and we're going to check that there is no fuel flow our ignition is on for a low start and now our starter is going to go into the lower position for a low start and then we will see that it's indicated we've got zero fuel flow which is correct ng is rising that's it above 14 already pressure is rising so that's it at 20 i'm going to introduce fuel now by moving condition lever into low idle itt is rising monitoring that, monitoring NGE once NGE hits about 52 it should peak yeah it does a sudden little jump so it did there peak, it's NGE stabilised at 53 so uh, that's a good engine start so the prop can come out of feather 
take my word for it. And starter is off, ignition off, and auxiliary fuel pump to standby. Our generator and our alternator can go on. So that was a lot of things I did quite quickly there. We'll just check, check them all off now. Starter off, ignition off, prop lever. Now it does call for the prop lever to go to max RPM. So I will do that using the mouse. Check our in engine instruments, make sure everything's in the green. Yeah, torque ITT sitting nicely at 473. Now you did notice that the ITT was quite low for a low engine start and I'm not sure it's actually modelled that differently between a high and a low at the moment. Um, pressure and temperature, oil pressure and temperature are good are in range and you can now see that our generator is 43 amps and our old neighbor is 10 amps, it's good, battery showing 25 volt. Just a word about the auxiliary fuel pump, uh, you don't just turn it off, you put it into standby and there is a sensor that will turn the fuel pump on automatically if fuel uh, pressure drops below 4.5 I believe and if we check on this system here, we can actually see what our fuel pressure in pounds per square inch so is currently six so if that was to drop below four and a half I believe uh, then the auxiliary fuel pump if it's armed and in standby will come on automatically. So our generators are on, our alternators are on, our lights at this point uh, we want to put on our navigation lights and our taxi lights. Now we've got our generator and alternator on, we can pop on the air conditioning system, well the, you know, the climate control system. And then we would start to work through making sure our avionics are set up. So I will show that quickly, so I'll get my CDI into GPS mode. I'm going to want uh, a DME showing and call uh, nav1 uh, DME showing. Uh, I'd set my target altitude and I would actually uh, set uh, autopilot modes as well at the moment, but I'll speak about that more in a later video. Um, but that is pretty much it for a low motor start. I'll just quickly show you uh, what a high start looks like. Working through it a bit more quickly this time. So we'll just run through uh, another engine start, a uh, high engine start this time and see how that looks. Uh, just note that we've got a bit of residual temperature in the engine from the last startup, uh, 71 degrees C and dropping. Uh, yeah, and I'll run through it a little bit more quickly this time. Uh, so. Uh, Plus one voltage, 24 volts checked, our flashing beacon can go on, emergency power lever is still normal, propeller area is clear, auxiliary fuel pump on, ignition switch not required for high start, starter on, indicated, fuel flow zero, temperature, uh, pressure is rising, NG rising, that's uh, 18, introduce fuel, condition lever to low idle, monitor ITT, okay that peaked at uh, 606, that's a good engine start, take the prop out of uh, favour, and uh, our starter is off, our ignition is already off and our fuel pump can go to standby and our generator and alternator can go on. Check our dials. So torque is good, ITT is good, NG is good, fuel flow 111. Normal range is 90 to 110 actually, so one over. Uh, 24 volts indicated and you can see our generator and alternator values and sort themselves out now uh, and then we would uh, get our nav lights on and taxi lights on and 
that a high engine start. Um, so the fact that they reached a higher ITT is simply because that residual ITT that was still present. So let's look at a little bit at what happens if you do it wrong. Okay, so this time we're gonna go uh, for another high engine start, but this time we're not uh, gonna follow the correct procedures and we're gonna see what happens. So, uh, bus voltage, 25 volts showing. Flashing beacon uh, on. Emergency power lever is normal. Auxiliary fuel pump is on and indicated. Ignition switch will remain off for a high start. And so we're going to go for a high start. Starter's on and indicated. Engine's rising. Oh! Alrighty. Oh dear, that didn't sound good at all. Oh dear, it appears that the condition lever was in low idle. So that is what will happen if you don't have the condition lever in cutoff when you start. Uh, that sounds really horrible, so let's get the starter off. And that fuel pump off. It's the first time I've ever done that. It's not good. In fact, I think it's on fire, judging by the continue now, so we better exit the aircraft. Well, it's funny the damage doesn't look so bad from out here. Uh, just to note, if you do blow the engine like that, it's not enough just to hit restart. You're going to have to end the flight, go all the way back out to the world map and start again. Um, you will also blow it uh, if you try and start it with residual IT. T, you'll also blow it if you in flight and if you're allowing you're redlining it and um, going above uh, any of the maximum ITT, maximum NG or uh, maximum MP. So all three of those values have to be respected. Uh, and also just again the starters if you uh, they've only got I think 1500 uh, uses normal uses and then they will fail as well uh, so yeah you just have to monitor that but generally if they fail it's just a case of you restart your flight you come back out to the world map and start again but that's no good if you're on short final and your engine blows uh, then you are well, you better hope uh, your skills are well drilled. Anyway, thanks for watching and thank you. If you liked it, give it a like. Uh, please subscribe. And uh, in the next uh, video, we'll be looking at uh, our taxi and ground handling. And uh, the one after that, we might even get airborne. So thanks for watching again. Uh, see you next time.